Good. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to CGHE webinar number 328. This is the fourth session in our webinar series examining the place of the arts and humanities in higher education. I'm James Robson from Oxford University, and today we'll be hearing from Dr. Aki Yonazawa and Dr. Sai Shimushi, who will be giving their talk entitled Gaining International Perspectives Through Undergraduate Education comparative case analysis, focusing on international liberal arts provision. Dr. Yonazawa is professor and vice director at uh, International Strategy Office at uh, Tohoku University in Japan. With a background in sociology, he mainly conducts research on comparative higher education policy, especially focusing on world-class universities, internationalization, and pub uh, public-private relationships in higher education. Dr. Shimaoshi is an associate professor at Tokyo Metropolitan University International Center. Her research interests lie in the area of internationalization of higher education, sociolinguistics, international studies, and global sociology. Now, before I hand over to them, there are some brief housekeeping points to mention. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted online on the CGHE website tomorrow morning. A transcript of the chat function conversation will also be posted. In addition, the webinar will be shared, shared in audio form uh, on the new CGHE podcast, which you can find on Spotify. Please keep yourself muted unless you've been asked to speak or ask a question. There's no need to have your video on during the webinar, but please do so when asking a question. We recommend using the speaker view so you can more clearly see who is talking. To ask a question, use the chat function and write out the question you wish to ask. At the end of the presentation, if your question is selected, you'll be invited to ask it yourself directly. When invited to ask a question, please unmute yourself, switch on your video and state your name and where you're from. I'll now pass over to Aki and Sei for today's CGHE webinar. The screen is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, just wait a moment, please. Okay, uh, so do you see the, the PowerPoint? Yes, that's great. Okay, so let me start. Uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation and uh, thank you so uh, so much for the, it's quite honor that uh, I can, we can be a kind of part of the, the seminar series by the, 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 the Simon uh, James and uh, also the Mok Kaho. And uh, the, today we will talk about the, the gaining international perspective through undergrad education, uh, especially the, the, the comparative case analysis focusing on international liberal arts provision. And uh, this is the outline of our presentation. So the first, uh, I will talk about the current status and debates on humanities, social science, and liberal arts, uh, especially focusing on Japan, but uh, around the East Asia. And then that we uh, will talk about the intake of the Western higher education models as a nation building project based on translation, East-West East hybrid, uh, independence, and then the catch up. And thirdly, we will talk about the uh, strategic uh, positioning via Grow Nakao Agency Heuristics, uh, which is quite famous, uh, the, the Simon and uh, the Gary Rhodes uh, the Heuristics, and that it is recently revisited by Simon. And uh, beyond catch up syndrome and the men mentality that is quite commonly uh, seen in the East Asia. And finally, as uh, to the language and the internationalization of higher education, I will hand over to Sae and uh, Sae Shimauchi will talk about this uh, point. So let me start from the, the current status and the debate on uh, humanities, social science and the liberal arts uh, as to make kind of linkage with the, our uh, presentation with the, the series uh, topic. So as you could see that uh, this is the, uh, the share uh, of the, the fields uh, of the new entrance uh, of the bachelor programs in OECD countries. And uh, this is interesting that uh, the, 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 le the left hand side is the arts and humanities, but uh, the Japan 
and uh, Korea is uh, quite contrary to our image that the outside humanities are actually relatively share, having the larger share uh, among the uh, the new entrants uh, of uh, of the bachelor, bachelor programs uh, within our OECD countries, and then the, these are the the, the right hand side is the the STEM field, and the the, the this shows that the STEM field uh, without including the uh, the medical services, medical uh, field. And if we uh, include the medical field, that this is the number, but the, uh, in case of Japan, uh, the, the, the STEM field, uh, the entrance, uh, it's only consists of only uh, less than 20% of the new entrance of the bachelor program. And the, the, in, even if we include uh, the medical program, uh, it is still uh, less than 30%. So the, actually the majority of the uh, students are studying in a, the humanities, but much more like a social sciences, like a legal studies or the, the, the management economics. And why it is so, it is quite simple that uh, we have a really large private higher education sector. Uh, the, so the modern, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the, the students are studying in a, the private universities in a bachelor program. So uh, under this condition, the, 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 these private universities make a kind of marketing uh, more for the, the relatively less tuition fee, uh, mass production, social science measures. And the, the, now the Japanese government is trying to strengthen the STEM field uh, as a national policy. So then the, the, they are expecting the university to provide more uh, STEM field up to the 50%. So this means that uh, the, the, this will be industrially uh, make a kind of very big uh, the challenge for the humanities social sciences, uh, the provide providers, uh, including the private university that uh, because the, our population is already started to decline. So this means that uh, the, in order to strength, uh, strengthen the or incre uh, increase the share of the uh, STEM fields, uh, we need to reduce the acceptance of the human and social science measures. So that is a very big issue. And also the very, very interesting is that uh, the, the, in case of Korea, uh, the STEM field is already almost 50%. So that is a very big uh, differences among this. And in adding to that, uh, we also have a very big serious problem of the kind of politically, there's a very strong attack of the uh, to the human science, uh, partly because the uh, in the uh, the academic performance, uh, which is uh, indicated by the the English based publication, uh, we are uh, that our human science is uh, almost no competitive because uh, it is written and uh, talk, uh, discussed in Japanese language, not in English. So. The, there is very big, uh, the, always a challenge that uh, are the, the, the governments uh, try to say that the, the, the human science is weak in our society, uh, country and also the not uh, uh, fit to the, the market needs, uh, industrial needs. That is a very big uh, issue, uh, issue. It is still ongoing uh, within our society. So the, as I mentioned that the, the human social science highly linked with the, our language, uh, national language, and also national cultural civilization. But uh, let me ex explain what our, that background more uh, by uh, discussing about the intake of the Western higher education model as a nation building project based on transition, uh, east west hybrid and the independence and the catch up syndrome and ment uh, mentality. So the, first of all, uh, let me clarify that the, 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 the term liberal arts in English is actually utilized in a very different manner in a different uh, the countries and district or the language and the institutions. So the, in, uh, at National Taiwan University, uh, there is a kind of school or the College of the Humanities, but this is, uh, this English name of this uh, college is a uh, liberal arts college. So the, the, actually it is completely different model of the, this is exactly the kind of humanities department but uh, this is a uh, called a uh, liberal arts college in if we if they choose the English name, and then the the, the Linnan University, the host uh, co-host uh, institution of this uh, series, uh, this is four-year US type 
through us. And this is, again, quite exceptional in a Hong Kong uh, based uh, higher education. Uh, this is uh, have a strong legacy uh, from the, the UK colonization. And then the, the Japan and the Hong Kong today have the very big general education in a, the beginning part of the, the undergraduate program. Uh, the, the, the condition is, uh, the, is different because uh, the, in case of Japan, we introduced uh, uh, the, this general education uh, after World War II by make, making a kind of bridge between the, the former uh, pre-war German model uh, that, that didn't doesn't include uh, other, other general education, but uh, the, the, in order to make a bridge with the, the four-year uh, universe, uh, US uh, compatible uh, system that the, we introduced the general education, humanities, social science, and the, the natural sciences uh, in the first and second year of the uh, four-year undergraduate program. And the Hong Kong's case, the, it is uh, only around 10 years before that the, the New Hong Kong uh, change, switched the, uh, the, the undergrad program from the UK compatible three-year system to the four-year system, because it's Chinese mainland con comparative, uh, or the U US. So then the, the, they invited the, the US uh, expert of the, uh, the liberal arts colleges, and then the introduced the general education in the first year. And the, in addition that we have about uh, the the non-Western, uh, our original idea of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, some kind of liberal arts education, so the, what we call kyoyo kyoiku in Japan. And the, the, this is, the, the exact meaning is cultural and refinement education. Uh, this is uh, actually the original model was the, the, uh, the kind of German type uh, gymnasium, uh, which is before the, the university. And the, uh, the residential college was there uh, before World War II. And the Korea the, the started the, the independence from uh, after World War II, but uh, the, the similar types of the, the terminology are there. And then the China, uh, it is quite anti, uh, 1990s, I believe that the, the, another, uh, the original Chinese original idea of the cultural quality education and the, uh, for all and development. So actually the liberal arts has a quite different meaning and that this is highly linked with the, the national culture. And then the, what does it mean uh, that the maybe you are, uh, become a more kind of the, the confident that the, the arts and humanities are really, really uh, linked with the, the, our, the cultural and civilization identity. So the, the before uh, we encounter the Western civilization uh, uh, until 15th century, uh, East, East Asian world is quite simple that we had a kind of center, uh, it is a Chinese dynasty, and then the Japan was located in the periphery on this. So the, what we're trying to do is to identify, uh, protect uh, the uh, local identity, but also the intake, the, the Chinese civilization. So uh, well, the, our slogan was Japanese uh, spirit with the, the Chinese knowledge. With that slogan was developed in 10th century. And uh, uh, after the 16th, 16th century, we uh, encountered the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Western civilization. And then the, after that, the, the, we, uh, the East Asian countries, China, Japan, Korea, uh, the, tried to control the trade uh, and the exchange with the Western society. So under this condition, uh, in case of Japan, we had uh, uh, the, the first uh, uh, in, uh, continuous intake of the Chinese studies, uh, Chinese civilization through the Chinese studies. And also that we had an intake of the Western studies uh, and the uh, civilization through the, the, our uh, partner Dutch, uh, Netherlands. And also that we also developed our own uh, national uh, Japanese studies. And that was, uh, became a kind of legacy uh, towards the, uh, uh, our very big uh, Westernization project uh, after 19th century. So what we try to do is that uh, uh, mid of the 19th century, the Japan and the other East Asian countries uh, started to open up uh, more directly uh, to the Western civilization. So in case of Japan, uh, we uh, started the national, uh, the Western mo uh, modern state, and also the, uh, we uh, launched the, the mo uh, Western type style uh, modern university system. So and there, 
uh, that we uh, had a, another slogan called Japanese spirit with the Western knowledge. And also that we uh, also make a kind of a uh, interaction with the Eastern uh, in intellectual tradition and culture uh, with the much more like uh, the mutual uh, the exchange between the uh, China and the Korea and Japan and others. And then the, uh, the as I mentioned that, that this policy uh, was uh, uh, is, uh, the process was done uh, mainly uh, through the translation uh, from the uh, English and other Western language to Japanese language. Uh, that was the Japanese language itself is a kind of the product of the modern uh, national product. But uh, uh, the, before that, let me just clarify that the, the, what is the translational movement in the medieval Europe that uh, so everybody knows that uh, actually the medieval Europe, uh, there was a, the, uh, the very systematic movement of translation from Arabic to uh, the, the Latin, and then the Latin was utilized in a common language of academic language in a, the medieval European universities. But uh, the, the what we saw uh, from uh, what's going on in uh, Western world in the mid of the 19th century was quite opposite that uh, many of the countries uh, like uh, the Poisson or the France uh, started to develop the national, uh, nationally built uh, higher education system or the higher education uh, uh, as a nation building project. So then the, 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 what we try to do is that the quite opposite that the, uh, the, we uh, in, translated everything into Japanese, uh, uh, for example, from English or the French or German and uh, try to make a kind of national uh, system uh, uh, from the various types of the universities and higher education institutions in Europe and North, uh, North America, plus the, our ancient uh, imaginary concept that called Daigakuryo that is originally in the 10th century or the 9th century. So that is uh, nobody actually knows this, but uh, the here uh, what we need to clarify is that the, the, not only for the academic uh, dialogue and the text, uh, the university system and the concept itself was a kind of product of the translation. Okay, so under this condition, uh, the Japan, uh, as I mentioned that, that this is, maybe we can say it as a nation, uh, a nation building uh, based on the translation. And uh, in China, uh, the much more strong uh, civilization there. So the, the, the concept uh, or the understanding is much more like the East-West hybrid identity. Uh, and then that to make a kind of modern higher, uh, higher education. And this idea is still uh, quite active uh, uh, not only mainland China, but uh, the greater China, uh, the region. And the Korea, uh, the, as you already know that uh, the, the Korea was uh, the occupied and uh, colonized by, uh, harshly by the Japan for three, uh, 37 years uh, uh, before World War II. So uh, the, so everything has to be uh, the kind of unique identity of the uh, different from China, different from Japan. So that is a very, very, uh, the kind of the decolonization process. So then the, uh, now you are familiar with the kind of East Asian uh, context uh, uh, of the, the arts and humanities linked with the, uh, the national building, nation building project uh, of their own language and uh, uh, culture. And uh, then the, let me switch to the, the uh, second, the third topic of the strategic positioning via grown up urgency heuristics uh, beyond catch up uh, syndrome and mentality. So the, I don't really need to talk everything about uh, the globalization, but uh, the, we had an experience of the globalization and there is a kind of the, uh, the, the geopolitical dynamism and the, the dominance of English uh, as a lingua franca. So under this condition, as uh, Godwin and uh, Altberg uh, already mentioned that uh, we experienced the widening influence of the US higher education model as especially as international liberal arts education via EMI and the East Asia is one of the regions that was actively uh, uh, taken the, uh, this kind of influence. EMI means the English medium instruction. And also the, the East Asian countries, uh, also we experienced the rise of the nationalism at the same time. And here, uh, the, the, this shows the share of the international student uh, of the, the level of the program. And uh, 
you could see that uh, not only in East Asia, but uh, among OECD countries, basically that uh, we had a much larger uh, share of the international students at the uh, postgraduate education. And uh, the Why UK Australia master program, this is quite uh, simple that this is a really uh, kind of commercial uh, the exporting product. And uh, if you go to Germany, France, and Japan, uh, then maybe we can say that uh, this is uh, of the doctoral program. Uh, this is uh, because of the uh, our uh, try our uh, our trial uh, to uh, attract the uh, international uh, the talents. But uh, if you could see the, the undergraduate program, especially for the East uh, Japan and Korea, uh, the share of the international students is quite uh, minimum. So the the in East Asia, especially, we had a very strong uh, national uh, the curriculum and also the examination uh, at the secondary education. So that maybe uh, still we can say that the, the secondary education function as a national formation and the integration at the main objective. But uh, if you go to the the, uh, the uh, after the uh, the bachelor program, uh, of course the labor market for the knowledge worker is becoming more international, globalized. And also the postgraduate education, as already mentioned, that they, this is also very, very international. So under this condition, if we make a very simplistic model that may, the, maybe we can say that the undergraduate education are expected to uh, function as a shifting uh, a student perspective from domestic to global or the international one. So how can we do that? And uh, then uh, the, we try to make kind of inter uh, the comparative study uh, of the four country plus United States and uh, we intentionally chose the, uh, the, the countries where they are uh, said that uh, the success were in internationalization of higher education and the smaller populations than Japan. So why it is so, uh, the, 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 it is quite simple that Japan is now uh, the, in the process of uh, the decreasing population, especially among young students. So what will happen, maybe we can learn from the, these countries. And uh, the Australia has, a, uh, as you know, that uh, the very uh, multicultural society. And uh, if you go to the primary education, it is quite mandatory uh, to learn the diff different culture outside of the English speaking system. But uh, if you go to the, uh, the, the higher education program, the, partly because of the, uh, the, uh, the product branding for the exporting industry, the very, very English monolingual system is uh, there. And if you go to Malaysia, uh, the, the very strong legacy of the UK uh, the system, but uh, the, the Malaysia have already, always, always tried to make a kind of national identity different from the, the global uh, Western uh, system. And, and then the, we also chose the, the Netherlands and also the Korea, but uh, I'd like to hand over uh, from here that the, the side will talk about uh, more on this. But uh, uh, before that, let me make kind of a, the framework we, in the end uh, reached so that this may be not that so uh, new uh, for the, especially for the people uh, uh, calling from the, uh, the Europe. So the convergence divergence is quite uh, the familiar among the European countries and also the, the, the James already mentioned in, her, in his presentation about the intrinsic mean the university academic uh, values and the extrinsic value, uh, which is from the industry or the, the, the government. But uh, the, this is actually very new or the, not that so uh, widely shared among the East Asia. So that we have much more kind of trap of the catch up. So that we need to uh, 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 simply uh, follow the model of the so-called advanced country. And then the, we, we are becoming more advanced so that uh, almost the kind of, we are trying to uh, pursue the kind of future direction uh, uh, of the catch up. But, uh, and uh, this is becoming kind of the, the widely shared uh, idea that, uh, that we cannot uh, uh, continue to uh, make a kind of the, the navigation for the catch up, but uh, we need to have something more like uh, the autonomous uh, or the wider option uh, for the uh, positioning uh, through the, uh, the, for example, this kind of a framework. Okay, so these are the other uh, references from us. So the, thank you so much. And uh, I will stop here and then the, uh, hand over to, to Sai.
Okay, thank you very much. Let me share my slides. Okay. Can you see the slides now? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, maybe today, but it's night in Japan. Um, uh, and then, um, from now, I like to briefly talk about the uh, just the uh, key essence of the international education in the Netherlands and South Korea and also in Japan. And uh, lastly, I'd like to talk about how language matters in international education. So uh, my presentation is based on these books. Uh, one is that the book we published, uh, me and Yodana Sensei published last year. Um, uh, so I'd like to start from the case of the Netherlands and uh, mainly I'm focusing on the university college in the Netherlands as a model of international education. Um, and uh, you all may know the uni what the university college is, but the university college is an undergraduate program created under the comprehensive university in the Netherlands. And this is a list of the universities we actually visited uh, in our interviews and, and our research. And um, uh, we they have a, a, the same name, like university college, but every university co college have a kind of different curriculum and different concept. Uh, even though the common concept is liberal arts, and liberal arts is like, like a common uh, concept, but uh, they also include a lot of different uh, disciplines and, uh, and specialties in, uh, in the different uh, university colleges. But it's uh, liberal arts and also it's very interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary. Okay. And uh, then why the Netherlands created this university college is because the Netherlands uh, scored very well in the international education comparison. So they have a uh, high average learning scores and low few low scores, but also few outstanding. And this is a uh, we are long concerns for um, uh, Dutch government uh, policymakers and also the academia. So, uh, policy uh, three policies are issues uh, to create uh, three picks on this egalitarian plateau. They said uh, one is uh, honors programs and the second one is research masters and the third one is university colleges. So, uh, I we just going to focus on this one. Um, and then how this university college is is one of the policy which to create those uh, peaks on the Breto is because they have university college have its own admission system. So they have an examination at the entrance and they have a very uh, um, high competition uh, but, uh, based on like essays and interviews and also like English skills and etc. Uh, and they also have a lot of international students from overseas uh, and uh, they also have uh, accept a lot of domestic students who have international experience, such as who ha has been studied abroad or who has been studied in the international schools or international baccalaureate school. Yes. And um, uh, I'd like to talk about the driving factors of, ex of that expansion of uh, university college in the Netherlands. There are uh, some interesting factors and the other extrinsic sick factors okay, sorry and um uh the first of all uh the dutch uh society and the government trying to create excellence in the egalitarian higher education system so our uh, university college is one of the very selective and competitive college to get in um, and then, and one of the reasons is because that they, first of all, they want to create the excellence. But another thing is that they want to introduce the international liberal arts, which the students can actually learn of, uh, from the wide range of the disciplines, because uh, the Dutch uh, higher education has been suffered from this high uh, retention rates for many years, uh, because they started the specialization from the very early stage. So once you get, once they um, graduate from the high school, they need to decide what uh, disciplines or what specialties you, you have. And if uh, uh, university uh, freshmen are or sophomore if they want to change their own uh, discipline or specialties they have to study it over again so they are they, they have very high retention rates 
So uh, solving this problem of, of early specialization, the university college is actually a very good um, um, very good opportunity for them to for the, for the student to think about what they actually want to major in the future. And also like that students and also the faculty members have a very high English proficiency. Uh, the Netherlands is one of the uh, country uh, their average uh, TOEFL score is the highest in the world, not like in Japan or Korea. And then another uh, extrinsic factor is that as a region, they have a Bologna process. So they uh, have standardization of the degree system and regional cooperation. And also under the Erasmus programs, uh, the European Union uh, promoted uh, global uh, regional student mobility within European Union. So those are the uh, uh, you know, uh, external factors to uh, increase, the, to, to expand the number of uh, university colleges. But there's also the side effect. Uh, one is that uh, excellency can be uh, lead this elit elitism. Uh, even though uh, any when we uh, visited the university colleges in the Netherlands and asked to the um, professors or like, the president, uh, they will never talk uh, say that uh, we are the elite institutions and they uh, it can, can, uh um. They intentionally avoid this term of elitism or uh, elite institution. But uh, many students actually coming from uh, very good high schools or the, from the family who are already prepared to send their kids to this international uh, circumstance. So we can say that uh, their economic or cultural capital or family is comparatively high uh, to uh, compare to the like, average uh, Dutch families. And also, uh, when we, if you're looking at the demography of the university colleges, there is a less representation of, of uh, Dutch domestic diversity, for example, like immigrants and descendant, descendants of the immigrants from the colonies, so the former colonies, and also the low number of students from outside of European uh, regions and uh, low number of uh, from developing countries as well. And another, uh, uh, side is that a uh, scientific and academic inheritance in the Dutch language. Uh, 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 we can uh, we see the relative loss of educational opportunity in Dutch and uh, national and uh, Dutch language, and also there is some public sentiment about education, educating international students like foreign students in uh, in university college uh, at taxpayers' expense. Uh, and also the declining interest in Dutch language and culture among both domestic and international students. And those are uh, one of the concerns of the having international college or any other kind of international programs in the Dutch higher education. So, uh, and in case of uh, South Korea, uh, we are, um, let's talk about the international college in South Korea. And international college is also one of the undergraduate programs and then, uh, usually they call as uh, so which means that uh, faculties or department of one comprehensive university. And, and in, in the context of South Korea, internationalization has been considered uh, almost the same as English medium programs. Uh, and uh, in, the South, in the South Korean context, uh, academia, um, universities, and also the government put a very huge, uh, big uh, emphasis on uh, English language as a medium of, of the education. Uh, it's mainly because there is some demand from the labor market. Like when, uh, and because the South Korea is one of the country which depends on trading, uh, trade a lot. And also they concern about the university ranking a lot. Uh, both international and domestic rankings. And even though uh, one of the very uh, influential domestic rankings stopped to count the number of English programs in each university, but still uh, having in, uh, English medium programs uh, uh, directly connected to the popularity of the universities and also the reputation of the university. And the English medium education and research has been expanded uh, primarily in the STEM field. So in the medical studies or uh, any science, natural science related studies, using English is 
much more common compared to humanities and social science. And this situation is uh, almost the same in Japan as well. And humanities is the uh, is the most uh it's the one of uh, it's humanity is um very uh, left lag behind in terms of uh, introducing uh, EMI uh, education. In the uh, in case of Korea, uh, the concept of liberal arts, uh, different from the Dutch case, it's not uh, actually uh, appreciated uh, by especially by the parents' generation of the students. So, uh, because the liberal arts is uh, uh, something that they do not have specialties or professions, it sounds like in that way in the Korean context. So, uh, in not like in the university college or not like international liberal arts department in Japan, they do not put this liberal arts term in the name of the department or faculty. So they just simply said it's international college or global department or whatever. And um, so in the under the international college, uh, the university, the college encourage the student to study a broad range of uh, disciplines. So they encourage like double majors uh one of the very popular uh way to uh do double major is economics plus one so the uh, students can study more can actually study uh two or three majors under this international college so that is that is one of the reasons why international college is very popular so that they can have two uh, specialties so international college in Korea is more like saladable rather than smoothie, which means that it's more like a discipline-based study in multidisciplinary curriculum. Yes. And um, uh, of course, there are some problems. Uh, when we visited uh, international colleges in South Korea, uh, not on, uh, in elite university, and also we visited some non-elite university in local area in South Korea, and then we see some uh, problems and issues, especially in the quality of English medium education. And uh, this uh, quality issues is more uh, visible in non-elite university, especially in the local area. Uh, so we can say that language matters a lot, uh, both in teaching and also the learning. Uh, and uh, in elite universities, such as like uh, Seoul National or Yonsei or the other uh, uh, private universities in Seoul, in Seoul area, they, uh, uh, they have a lot of professors who, who received a degree from uh, uh, United States, mostly. Um, and then uh, if you go to the local university, like non-elite universities, uh, many professors got a degree from like a domestic university. So you can see that language linguistic proficiency is quite different between uh, elite and non-elite universities, uh, both in teaching staff and also students. And the range of uh, disciplines is also different uh, future between non-elite and elite university. So in elite universities, you have more diverse discipline and, and academic oriented. But in non-elite university, it's more career oriented. So for example, they, they usually focus on business or management or tourism or economics or language and cultural studies, such as like English language learning and English, like a British or American culture studies. And another interesting dimension is that some of the internationalization in Korean university have this uh, nationalistic uh, side. So that international college is uh, become also the place to accommodate international students. And of course, because it's, it's taught in English, so it's an alternative choice of the Korean medium education to learn uh, national contexts such as Korean studies or Korean language or Korean culture, etc. And then emergence of international or there is also the emergence of international or global college with a Korean medium education for foreign students. So uh, even so they have the name of international college or a global uh, department uh, under the Korean uh, university. Sometimes they are using like a totally Korean language to teach foreign students uh, who want to study in Korean language. But those students are mainly from Asian country, uh, mostly from Southeast, East, Southeast Asia. And uh, uh, this is just, very brief, uh, brief explanation about international liberal arts in Japan. And in Japan, also, we are uh, 
uh, we uh, uh, increase the number of the college, which called international liberal arts. Uh, we have a very uh, large number of the international liberal arts college, but under the this name, uh, we have 16, I know, uh, from mass to elite uh, university, mostly private universities. And the university disparity regarding the, con there's a university disparities regarding the context of liberal arts. So liberal arts, the term itself in Japanese is really uh, ha have a, a multiple meanings. So every university have a kind of like a different interpretation of the liberal arts. So their curriculum is pretty, diff pretty diverse between different universities. And also the quality of programs are diverse, of course. And another thing is that um, uh, we, they have a huge influence uh, of the discourse of a global human resource development uh, on, on the creation of the liberal, uh, international liberal arts. So uh, they, uh, some, um, their goal is to cultivate the global leaders with international competence who can eventually contribute on Japanese society. So this is the main concept of the global human resources in Japan, and which is totally different from the concept of, for example, cosmopolitan citizen or global citizenship. Etc. Uh, so the main uh, uh, the goal of the creating what kind of uh, global citizenship or slash global human resources is really different in the context context of Japan and and the other country. And national dimension of uh, internationalization is kind of similar to the Korean case. So under the international liberal arts uh, department, uh, many universities provide this kind of curriculum to let the Japanese student to know about Japan so that you can be more competitive and more uh, good representation of, of Japan in the international uh, sphere. So they teach like a Japan studies for Japanese students yeah, to let them know more about Japan. Okay, and uh, just briefly talk about similarity and the differences. Um, so similarities are uh, among those uh, uh, international college or international university, international uh, uh, university college, etc., is that internationalization uh, and uh, some uh, and also the in in Englishization of the programs is the driving forces of the domestic disparities uh, in uh, both between universities and students, and especially in the case of Japan and Korea. Uh, those international college or international life department is a resource for sending domestic students and at the same time accepting a foreign student in exchange programs. So having this kind of uh, international college is very really important for the university themselves because they need to send their uh, students, their domestic students to the overseas countries, especially to the English speaking countries. And when the university accept the student from English speaking countries, they need to provide the education in English. So, that's, so that is kind of like a strategical uh, reason why they need to expand this international college. And the difference is, is that English medium education and research is kind of installed in the Netherlands and South Korea in a different way, but I will say not actually in Japan. And the readiness uh, of the English language skills is totally different between those three, three countries. But I will say even though Japan and Korea is very close in terms of uh, linguistic proximity, but our readiness to the English language and uh, uh, learning something in English is totally different. So um, language matters a lot, I will say, in international education, because uh, if you change the language of the need of the education, it will change the range of students that, that programs uh, can target or a program, program can accept. And also um, the programs involve more diverse teaching staff, uh, including like foreign staff and also who have experience in the foreign countries and which can lead to the change in the classroom culture. So if you change the staff, it will change the culture of the teaching and also the atmosphere of the classroom. And it will lead to the transformation of the classroom culture, such as like Western cultural norms, 
like the more casual relationship with uh, students and teacher relations, or sometimes maybe the classroom atmosphere that uh, facilitate the discussions and challenge to the professors or uh, criti uh, criticize them, uh, criticize each other. And those kind of like a, a cultural transformation can be happens in the EMI education. Uh, and also, uh, uh, I'm I'm going to stop here since we are running out of time. But uh, they will influence all the future direction of academic research in Japan. Yeah, so that's all for me. So thank you very much for listening, and we are very open. Uh, this is just a uh, we are providing some discussion points uh, uh, for everyone. So uh, we are really uh, open for any kind of uh, comments and questions. Thank you very much. Well, thank you both for uh, uh, you know two really excellent presentations. I mean, you raised some really, really interesting issues. I think going from the historical perspective through to this really rich empirical work was absolutely fascinating. Um, colleagues, do post your questions in the chat. I can see some coming through now. Um, we'll go to Kaho for the first question. Kaho, if you'd like to ask it. Yeah, thank you, James. Uh, thank you, Aki and Say. A uh, very interesting presentation. So, based upon your uh, analysis about uh, the liberal arts education being presented with uh, some comparative study long in the uh, East, but also in some uh, in Europe, I just wonder uh, what is then your assessment of the uh, of the role of arts and humanities in the context that you just presented. Which of you would like to uh, to start answering? <laughs> uh, so can we start one by one? Oh, the, okay, thank you so much, uh, Kaho, and uh, this is very, very important. And uh, so that I basically share the 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 the, the previous uh, discussion by yourself and uh, others that uh, the human and social science is a very, very important role uh, for the kind of the uh, uh, making the kind of the, the value of the the society and also the 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 and, and make a kind of the the the, the, uh, the direction of this uh, navigating things. But uh, the the big big issue for us is the as already mentioned that the the language does matter here, and the 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 social uh, humanities and arts uh, are actually the the part of the uh, the it is a kind of founder of the the our civilization from the local context and that, uh, without that uh, we cannot develop the, the local civilization but at the same time uh, the, the this is not uh, visible uh, if we focus on a kind of uh, English dominated one language uh, global system and then the the, the uh, in comp uh, contrary that the, the pure uh, basic sciences like uh, physics or the chemistry everything is visible. Uh, in English speaking system. And uh, then the, the, it is very easy to attack the arts and humanities from the kind of the global competitiveness or something like that. So that is uh, what we are now experiencing. But uh, in the end, so the, what, uh, the, the both the kind of academics and also the, the students are now struggling to make a kind of a, the bridge between the, uh, the kind of our uh, international visibility and the the way of the uh, legacy of the the the, the arts and humanities, uh, which has developed is in our own la language world. So that is a very very big dilemma we are facing with. Let me stop here. So, would you like to uh, to add to that? Um. Yes. Um. Thank you very much for asking questions, and I'm I'm it may related to the second question i just read it uh, but uh, yes uh when we visited like uh, um many international like uh, colleges which is called international college or international liberal arts college and then what um the one commonality is that when they they said it's international so which means that they have they are using like a uh, lingua franca english and then they are providing a very interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary curriculum so those are the two those are the commonalities, but how they interpret interpret the, this 
uh, interdisciplinarity or liberal arts is really, really different in a different cultural context in the different society. And that part was, for me, was really interesting that what this was those societies or those university consider that what is important for the students. And then uh, as Munina Sensei said that uh, like a science, like a STEM field is more dealing with like a universal values, such as like a natural science or, you know, creatures or something. But the, in the humanities and social science, we need to face the uh, national context or like a cultural context and national context. So the language issue is really fatal, like really critical for us. Uh, so um, uh, what, uh, how we learn and in what language from who is really, really matters uh, in the inter international liberal arts or international cult. And um, yeah, and then uh, and through the uh, through our research, uh, I, I, we, we kind of think that uh, we uh, can kind of do the comparative studies uh, between different countries, like what kind of uh, internationalness we are, uh, they are um, like, uh, presenting. Uh, in a different context. So that was uh, really interesting. Sorry that I cannot uh, explain in the very in detail, but uh, this is my comments. Thank you very much. Well, thank you both. And I think this issue of language is really important. And as, as you highlighted, this does touch on um, So Young's question. Um, so, so maybe So Young, we could bring you in at this point to, uh, to deepen this discussion around language. Thank you, James. Um, yeah, great. Um, you touched upon um, my question a bit, but let me just read it again. Um, and so regarding the uh, issue of language and arts and humanities and international higher education. So I was wondering if it is possible and in the desirable direction for us, for international higher education to become when, um, uh, when focusing on humanities and arts and how would it impact the nature of knowledge, especially in the field of humanities art. And yeah, that, that's my question. Uh, sorry, uh, are you going first? What is oh, you go, uh, sorry, actually, I, I cannot listen very well. Uh, can you go first? OK, uh, sure. OK, thank you. So the, yeah, I think that the, maybe we should make kind of a, the, the, the vision uh, we can have, uh, desirable vision. And, uh, I think that uh, the, the what we are now trying to do is, uh, and the, actually it is also the kind of the case of the Netherlands. But uh, the, if you uh, start the international uh, uh, the liberal arts uh, with together with the uh, both the, the home students and the international students, uh, you will find that the, this is not more than the kind of the, just the kind of elite uh, the standardized education, but much more like the interaction between the different culture and different uh, people from the background, that is a kind of co-learning uh, or collaborative learning uh, among the different people uh, from all over the world. So this experience is uh, valuable, uh, not only for the, the people who are in a, that track, but uh, almost everybody. So that is uh, uh, what we are now trying to do, for example, in our university. So that we are trying to make a kind of the and not, not the full, but uh, kind of at least partial experience to all of the students, uh, some kind of international experience within uh, the bachelor program by not only utilizing our home language or the uh, just the English language, but that is the kind of uh, what we are trying to do. And uh, the, this is related to the similar things about the, the stress of the STEM field. So the, the, what we are now trying to do is the, the, with some information sciences, uh, it's becoming very, very important. Uh, for everybody. So then the, the, we are also trying to make kind of a, the, the partial small pro uh, credit system uh, uh, so that to cover all of the, almost all of the students for some kind of information sciences. That kind of a interdisciplinary experience is now uh, spreading uh, among the, uh, across the, the, the disciplines, uh, the field. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think you, I think you answered very well. So I, I, I think we can move on to the next question. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I think we'll bring in uh, Mohammed uh, Rashid at this point. Mohammed, are you there? Yeah, I'm. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Um, just um, uh, I'm wondering, there is, they're talking about the uh, elite and non-elite higher education system. Um, so I'm wondering, that is, is there any uh, labor market outcomes or any sort of outcomes because of elite and non-elite students? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is quite interesting. And uh, maybe uh, at this moment, uh, this highly depends on uh, the country, but the, the, the much more clearly, the, the, in case of Netherlands, the side mentioned that the elite and the non elite is quite visible. Uh, as you know, that the, 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 if we were in a the university college, uh, in the Netherlands, so that it is kind of the, the pathway to the, the UK elite universities at the postgraduate program. And uh, this is not that so visible in case of Japan, partly because of the very strong national uh, economy that is basically based on the, our national languages. And uh, I believe that the, uh, the, the, for example, China, the, of course, the, it is most possible to study abroad, but uh, uh, the the partly because of the very big, a uh, huge uh, hierarchical system already is existing. That uh, this is not that so visible, uh, uh, but uh, obviously that uh, they are not uh, a part of the elite, but they're not really the kind of core elite. I hope I am um, uh, answered to your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Aki. Um, so, did, did you want to add anything to that? that no, answer? no, it's okay. Please move on to the next one. Thank you. Okay, well, I think we'll bring in um, uh, Rennie Bowling. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hello, I'm Renee. I'm coming from Columbus, Ohio at The Ohio State University. Uh, my question was about the English medium nature of a lot of these liberal arts international college programs. To what extent do you think that inhibits their ability to innovate with indigenous and locally based or even historically locally based expressions of the liberal arts. Okay, side reads. Okay, um, I, I'm not sure I, I understand your uh, question correctly, but uh, um, I would say that interpretation of the liberal arts is pretty much very localized in the in the different national context. So, um, yes. Uh, so um, it's it's a kind of combination of using English as a um, a lingua franca, like a common language, and it's actually a very uh, practical competitiveness to fight against the world <laughs> for for Japanese and Korean. And, and also uh, they're using the concept of the liberal arts. And then of course they uh, uh, on the like uh, on the visions and then uh, like on the goal, they are talking about like a you know critical thinking or you know uh, creating like a whole like a, what the whole education or those kind of like words uh, we can find in the liberal arts. But uh, uh, in the reality, it's more like a mixtures of the different disciplines. <laughs> and then uh, even and also the, the the way to mix up mixing up those disciplines is pretty different in a different university in a different context. So, um, yeah, did did I answer to your question? I'm I'm not sure. I actually understand your questions quickly, but yeah, no, thank you for your response. I think I think we're wrapping up here, so I'll pass it off. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Renee. Um, I think this issue of uh, indigenous, indigenous knowledge is, is really important and the relationship between localized knowledge and language uh, mm -hmm. when taking global perspectives is, 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 is really worth exploring in more depth. But I think we'll, we'll, we've got time for one more question. So I'm going to bring in um, Jing Liu, if you're there. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Good evening and good morning. From, uh, this is Jing Liu from Tohoku University. Uh, first of all, Congratulations to my colleagues, uh, Professor Yunizawa and Professor Simawushi for your uh, pre wonderful presentations. And at the same time, uh, well, recently I'm, I'm very curious about the development of uh, uh, education for sustainable development. And uh, I'm sure uh, liberal arts education is one part of this uh, uh, field and uh, has been uh, receiving a lot of attention and concerns. So my question is, uh, 
in your comparative study, and did you find any uh, impact of this emerging discussion? I think in your countries, European countries, most of the discussion giving emphasis on climate change, but in countries like Japan, we give more emphasis on SDGs. But uh, I, I would like to ask your opinion, like what is the, like the impact of these emerging discussions on the current liberal arts in, in, in the countries involved in your study? And, and uh, is there like difference between the West or the East? Or uh, in the end, uh, how do you think the role of liberal arts in promoting the sustain sustainable development? Thank you very much. Thank you. This is a very, very interesting and important question. So the, I'm not sure that the, we uh, really fully know about this. And the, the, let me just make a, just a kind of the, the tentative comments uh, from my tentative view that uh, the, at least that uh, 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 considering the case of Japan and also the, in Korea and the China, that uh, if we don't have a very uh, huge dialogue on the sustainable development, the, the global issue in our national local language, it is impossible to realize anything uh, in our society, right? So the the so this means that uh, the the it is quite unrealistic that uh, just to make kind of a very, very English based uh, discussion among the kind of the English uh, thing, and, and then that, that is the on uh, if we do it only for that issue like. Uh, Though for if we are expert of the, this field of the uh, sustainable development, it never have uh, you know realize anything. So that is a kind of the the issue we are facing with. So the the and this really symbolizes that the the the, the function of the arts and humanities uh, experts, or academics in the uh, non English speaking system that. Uh, the, the, we need to have uh, a kind of the, some kind of a very strong connection with the, the local system, not only for the, our own career development, but more kind of make uh, our studies influence to influential uh, to the, our own community. And the other, maybe we, we need to ha have a function to bridge between the, the, the international community and the local community. Thank you. So would you like a final word? Oh, no, it's okay. Thank you, Jinyu, for asking for a wonderful question. And it's going to be our task to think further on this topic. So thank you very much for asking. Excellent. Well, thank you all for wonderful questions. And, and a huge thank you to, 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 to you both, Aki and, and Si, for, for really, really thoughtful and insightful presentation. So thank you very much. Um, we continue our um, webinar series on the arts and humanities next Tuesday, where we will actually cover some of the issues I think raised in that last question by talking about um, humanities and arts, the East and West in a seminar with uh, Marek van der Vend and Rui Yang. So we hope to see you all there. And once again, thank you to our speakers. Huge thanks for a wonderful presentation. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.